Good morning. I am Coley Bennett, your NAB chairman. Joining me today is Crystal Bruning, also the NAB, and Kim Krauss. You see us little tiny way down at the bottom in our turquoise um, NAB um, polo shirts here. This is our very first morning buzz. So we say good morning and welcome. This is me and my Paycom cup getting a, a sip of dough here. And a huge shout out to our good friends at First Healthcare Compliance who supply these cool masks for us. Um, if you're looking for those last minute CEUs, that we all need to, for certification purposes. First Healthcare Compliance has a bevy of things that they give to people for free. So you definitely want to reach out to these big fits. All right, now that all of our commercials are finished, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. This whole point, the whole point of our morning buzz is to have a conversation with our PayCom members, kind of like we used to do in the hallways at conference. This is more of a guided conversation um, definitely not a webinar. So this is conversational. We share experiences. So if you want to participate, put your hand up to speak. We can read your question directly from the chat. But if you would like to be on and actually speak, we'll make you a presenter so you can have your say. All right. So breaking news. This is very exciting. The Paycom Journal has gone digital. This is so exciting for us, um, especially as people who contribute frequently to the journal. We did have a digital format before, kind of. You know, you had to go to the website, kind of flick each page. Well, it's actually much better now, and it's absolutely live. Let's see if I can share that screen with you. Can you guys see my new screen? This is our new journal, and how beautiful is it? And I am so very lucky to be uh, one of the first contributors reimagining success in 2021 and beyond. Um, so it's a really good story. If you have a few minutes, please go to the Paycom website and check it out. The great thing about this format is that the content is much more um, current. So we don't have to write it weeks in advance and wait for the magazine to be produced. Now we can give you hot topics, um, the most current information as it's actually happening. So this is a huge, huge win for Paycomers. A big step for national office. Shout out to Karen and her team, um, Simon, and our editor, Laura, who's amazing, um, who made this happen for us. It is such a good look for Paycom. I'm so very proud of the, the, the um, strides Paycom is taking to become a little bit more um, user-friendly in this digital world. So extra, extra, read all about it. Breaking news, we've gone digital. So proud. OK. Awesome. All right, our next slide. We're gonna talk about COVID vaccination. Um, this is a hot button issue. It was on the listserv for the last few days, maybe a couple of days last week. And uh, people wanted to know um, more about the vaccination process, if anyone's already gotten the vaccine, um, any side effects, things like that. And how do they get their, their staffs vaccinated? What, what's the process? Well, my staff is gonna be vaccinated today. Um, and I can tell you what we did is we got a survey from uh, Montgomery County Health Department. And once we filled in the survey, they asked how many employees we have, you know, that kind of thing. We immediately got a follow up email that said these are the two days that you and your staff can report. Um, we're given the Moderna um, vaccine, um, the dosing instructions. Um, it's appointment only. And that email is only good for the exact amount of people what we said in the survey that you had in your office. So that's the way that they're kind of controlling things, at least here in Montgomery County, Maryland. Um, I'm sure the process is pretty similar across the country. If your practice hasn't gotten anything from your health department, you should definitely reach out to them. Um, they probably have a list or a survey monkey or something going around. Get your staff on that list. Um, we have not yet made it mandatory, but I can tell you that my entire staff was very anxious um, to say yes, to, to be vaccinated. So this is a big thing for us. Crystal, do you want to talk about the emergency use? The emergency use, use authorization um, basically means that the uh, COVID-19 vaccine is not FDA approved. It hasn't gone through the whole process that a vaccine normally would, but it has been authorized for uh, emergency use only. So it's going to be good 
as long as we are under um, this emergency, uh, federal emergency, the pandemic emergency, we're, we're going to be good till then. After that, I don't know if they're, I, I'm wondering myself if they're going to use the data from what they get from the vaccines after they're giving them to use for um, their studies or if they're going to have to go through the whole process again. I don't think that's clear yet. So. All right. And here's our dosing schedule. So the Pfizer vaccine, which was the first one available, is a series of two, um, three weeks apart. So um, right now we do know that they are suggesting that when you start with one vaccine, your second dose is the same vaccine, so. Yes, so we have, um, we're getting the Moderna vaccine um, and it is for us four weeks apart, um, which is uh, probably pretty good for our office if we go all at one time and you know go back all at one time mm -hmm. so that we can ensure that people receive the second dose. Yeah. I think that's probably, you're right, Crystal, that was probably the most eye-opening thing that they're not interchangeable. So you can't start with, let's say, um, Pfizer and then for whatever reason decide, okay, I want my second dose to be AstraZeneca, um, that they're recommending that you stay with the same um, drug company for the complete vaccination series. So I think that's a, an important point to make. Um, all right, so here are the risks associated with the Pfizer vaccine. This is directly from their patient handout sheet. Um, just like any other vaccine, you may have some um, pain, redness, or swelling at the, the injection site, some tiredness, headache, muscle pain, chills, joint pain, fever, um, so you're definitely going to be sitting there for that 15 minutes afterward just to make sure that everything is okay. They do have um, a very similar to any other vaccine type of allergic reaction, severe allergic reaction, difficulty breathing, swelling, uh, face or throat, fast heartbeat, bad rash all over your body, dizziness, weakness. Um, those are the things that you know we're on the lookout for, generally speaking, with any vaccine. So that's not very different. Um, with the um, Pfizer vaccine. All right, so next we're gonna hear from Kim. Kim is actually on the front lines of uh, giving out this vaccine. She's been working behind the scenes um, with her hospital to vaccinate the um, people there. Kim, you wanna give us your report? Sure, so beginning a week ago Friday, our hospital system uh, using the Pfizer vaccine, that's the vaccine we got in first, um, had vaccinated a little over 1,500 staff um, here in the hospital. And side effects, I, I can report we had out of the 1,500, there was one person who had some minor hives, uh, you know, within a few minutes, treated successfully. But pretty much everyone is reporting mild soreness for less than a day. Uh, it's been very successful. Um, not as many have vaccinated as we would like. You know, we want to hit at least 60%, and it's, it's not quite there. You know, people are still concerned. But hopefully, you know, having seen this many people have been vaccinated, they're doing great, no real problems here. Yesterday, we did start the Moderna vaccine, uh, gave out a few hundred of those. So I don't have any first-hand knowledge other than nothing exciting happened yesterday. Um, so I'll give it a couple days and then I'll know a little bit more about side effects from the Moderna. Um, but here our hospital systems are, are vaccinating, again, all staff, um, offices that have, uh, that are in the medical office buildings attached and have even opened it up now to the um, medical offices at large for the staff. Um, so we're here, we're not having to go through the health department. It's pretty much, you know, watch for your time and go. Um, pretty quick process. You know, you can run the clinic pretty much like your flu clinics that you do. Um, so that's good to know when we start for offices who will be giving it to the public uh, that you've, you've already got a little bit of a baseline of, oh, what do you do here? You know, it's, it's just pretty much like your basic flu clinic. You can uh, vaccinate a lot of people in a short amount of time. Um, and so, yeah, so far, all good news. 
That's amazing. I think a lot of people's um, concern was, um, you know, some of the reactions that social media will have you believe that we're having people fainting, people needing emergency room care. Um, you know, I think um, being very prepared is a good thing. But, you know, we do flu clinics all the time. We, we give vaccines. So I think there's already a, a pretty high level of preparedness across our industry and what kind of to look out for. And you really do know when people are in trouble or having some kind of anaphylaxis. So it is um, probably a, a better idea to start with the hospitals. At least if something goes wrong, you're in the right place for, for something to go wrong. Um, but I am so excited to finally um, have something. It gives you a ray of hope that there's a light at the end of this uh, dark tunnel that we've been going through. Um, did did they say anything, Kim, about how long the vaccine will last? Is it a yearly thing? Do, do we have any word on if if you know we get it every six months, every two years? What's it going to be? Right. None of the manufacturers have gone as far as they're saying. We don't really know, you know, what what's going to happen with that. How long it's going to last? So that's still part of the the trial that we all are. <laughs> It's a hopeful trial. It's a, it's a very hopeful trial. So let's um, open it up to questions. I think that's the part where we are now opening up to let's talk about it. Paycom, what a groovy picture. You remember taking that picture at the uh, the last conference and we had everybody kind of squat down and try to jam into one little group selfie situation. Mm -hmm. I absolutely, uh, looking, at, looking at that picture just reminds me of good times. Any questions, um, go ahead and either raise your hand or put your question in the chat box. We're happy to talk about it. Um, Kim, there was a report or two of people saying that the vaccine made them um, infertile or they were having fertility issues after the vaccine, which I thought was really um, early on. I mean, two weeks in, three weeks in after getting the vaccine, there were issues. Did you hear any, anything about that at your particular hospital? No, I did not. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's more social media buzz than than anything else. I would um, definitely say yes because you know it's uh, you got to try a little bit longer than that. <laughs> it's only been a couple of weeks, so yeah. No, I, I don't think that's the case. And is everyone else hearing that AstraZeneca is coming to market um, really soon, sometime in January? That would be really good. Yeah. I've not heard anything about Johnson and Johnson yet, but I know that they're working on it. Um, but the AstraZeneca, a lot of people are kind of um, waiting with bated breath because that name is a little bit more familiar to people, mm -hmm. um, you know, industry-wide. So it's so good to have so many choices. Do and the not AstraZeneca feel only has to be refrigerated, so that will help okay. get it to a lot of people all over the world. That's Yeah, that's, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah. You know, it makes me wonder how many... Um, you know, from a private practice standpoint, we have a couple of offices, you know, I could probably do a Sunday clinic um, or because we, we're not open on Saturdays, but on a Sunday clinic we could probably, you know, do quite a few vaccinations um, with a product that just requires regular refrigeration. Um, that would make it much, much easier to get um, uh, vast amounts of our population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, another um, um, part to this is uh, some of the things that we're hearing about new strains of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys familiar with what's going on in the UK? That's finally made its way to the United States. There was a guy who, um, okay, um, there was a gentleman in Colorado who came down with the UK strain um, that he's been quarantined. Um, so I'm very excited. Um, that from what I've heard is that they're hopeful that the vaccines that we're getting will protect us from that particular strain because that UK strain they say is about 70% more communicable, which, you know, at this point, all we're missing is the plague of locusts in 2020. The last thing we need is something even more contagious than, than the COVID that we already have. Yeah. Um, so there are other strains that are, are happening around the world and it is so, um, kind of scary, but I'm glad that we have something, you know, it, it definitely says, you know, the good guys are fighting back and that is, you know, epic from, from my point of view. Um, it gives people. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we see no other questions. Anybody else have a point to make? Hmm. All right, so we're gonna go to our next slide, which is a big one. This is our thank you. We love this slide because we love PACOM, right? We volunteer to be um, on the National Advisory Board to share knowledge with PACOM members. We have two venues for doing that right now. It's very, very early morning buzz in our PACOM live series, which we do a little bit later in the evening after everyone's off of work and has a chance to kind of um, um, decompress a bit so you can do some additional learning. And we are actively working on a PACOM happy hour. Mm -hmm. That ought to be a bunch of fun. So having that happy hour would be a great time for us to talk to one another and kind of reconnect. Um, you know, it's hard in the digital world to be um, connected, to feel very connected. So this is our attempt to make sure that PACOM continues to share knowledge, that we stay connected, and that we master this digital landscape. We can do it. National has been leading the way. We're 100% behind this push to give everybody PACOM in their pocket. How cool is that? If I want to show off the PACOM journal, I don't have to slap around a bunch of magazines anymore. It's right here. It's in my pocket. I can pull it out and show it to anybody I want to show it to. And it actually worked well. Um, so shout out to Karen and national team and Laura again mm -hmm. for that beautiful PACOM journal. Thank you guys for your attention for our first morning buzz. If you have any ideas or anything you want us to talk about or cover, please reach out to us at nab at paycom.com. Kim, Crystal, you guys have any final words? You're good? Yeah. Kim, thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate um, all that you're doing to keep everybody safe out there in California. If you guys can't see it, Kim's got the best background. She's got a palm tree out, the, out of her window. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? She's got a poem too. I got magazine covers. I, I think I got like the, the crap into the stick on that one. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for your time. This is so much fun. We're looking forward to doing so many more with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.